Hi there, I'm at Bio Europe Spring in Amsterdam. I'm here with Jonathan, who is a co-founder of Biomix, who is an Israeli microbiome startup. Tra recently raised a big round, $24 million uh, from Orbimed, Seventure, and some, some other uh, corporate partners. So the, the first question, really in interesting approach to the microbiome. I mean, the microbiome theme is already really interesting. And then you add on, to, on top of that a phage approach with a phage cocktail. Um, but from my understanding, at least phage has been explored, especially in the East and in Russia, uh, but has never been, uh, there's no any product approved in Europe or in, in the US. So how, how will you like make the move and get it on the market? Right. So, so I think the uh, main thing has been target selection. The problem has been which targets you go after. So for example, there's a story of a study in diarrhea in which I had a phage cocktail initiated by Nestle. Uh, going after a specific type of bacteria and then the conclusion was that the diarrhea probably was driven by another type of bacteria. So the blessing and curse of phage is being actually very, very specific. So actually it's all about target selection because phage are exquisitely effective. Yeah. When you test them in models, you test them in vitro, this is like a nuclear bomb. It, applica it replicates inside the target, kills everything. For every single bacteria that is infected by a phage, you get a hundred phage. Yeah. So it's an exponential process. But if you don't choose the right target and you don't construct your cocktail correctly, you're either hitting the wrong thing or a mutation arises and then the phage cocktail is not evident and not effective anymore. So it's actually about the target selection and how you build the cocktail. We've actually spent a lot of time into target selection. We bought a company uh, just because of the computational aspect and the fact that it's not enough to talk about a specific species. We need to understand things by the strain level because phage are sometimes selected by strain. Yeah. And so, so, I mean, I completely agree that like, the potential of phages is, is obvious. It kills the bacteria, it multiplies inside the bacteria, it's super specific. Um, but I get one of the big changes also is the regulation. Like it, it's a living yeah. drug. So how do you cope with that? Um, yeah. so, so that's actually been very encouraging. Um, the FDA had a workshop over the summer about phage therapy. They're obviously very excited to drive it forward. They're looking for alternatives for antibiotics. Um, and they said that actually when you do a studies with phage, again, it's not committal, it's just a workshop, but they said that there's no need to do animal safety because it doesn't mean anything because there's no target. Okay. Um, and usually you can just go straight to a patient because you don't want to even go for a human that doesn't have the target. Um, so it's very interesting. I would say it's not very different than what we see with bacteria, yeah. naturally occurring bacteria. Again, these are naturally occurring phage. Yeah. In our experience with a meeting with the Ministry of Health in Israel, we heard the same feedback. Okay. So I think the landscape is starting to be right together with the computational advances. Maybe it's converging to kind of put a dent into this. So I guess this explains the timing of the fundraising. We'll, we'll get back to the, to the financing later, but so, okay, that, that makes sense. And then, as you said in your last answer, phages were mostly applied for antibiotics or like antibacteria, but you applied to microbiome, which is right. one of the super trending field. A lot of things happening. Um, so why is that? Why, why microbiome? Why not? Why IBD or why microbiome and not uh, antibiotics? So it's an excellent question. It goes back, I think, to where we started. I think we, we understand that phage therapy is complicated. We understand it's all about the selection of the right bacterial target. We need the time to analyze the data, think about it, understand how the cocktail works, modify the cocktail, follow the cocktail. So that means that if a patient comes in, has like severe bacteremia, is about to die in a few days, there's not enough time to make a decision. We actually want something that we have the time to measure, take a sequence, analyze it, run it through a computational pipeline, test everything ex vivo, that our cocktail works, understand what's going on, and then test it. So that's why we think it's more, at least in the first pass, these chronic diseases are a better fit. So that is, you have a longer, longer impact than you can, yeah. Um, and so that was one of my questions. So it's also really a, you adapt the therapy, personalize the therapy for every patient or how do you adapt the cocktail right. of the phages? Yeah. So, so we're hoping not to be in a situation that we need a specific cocktail for every person. Yeah. But I think one of the targets that we're looking into in IBD um, is technology is a target that we licensed from Professor Kenny Honda in Japan, yeah. uh, one of the big names in the microbiome. And he, he published in Science that a certain strain of Klebsiella uh, is causative in IBD. Now, we don't expect that 100% of the yeah. 
uh, IBD patients will have that bacteria, but we think that a substantial chunk of patients will have that bacteria. And then what we think these diseases like IBD would go to is what you see in cancer, right? In cancer, somebody comes in, tumor gets sequenced, you send it to the US through foundation medicine, they tell you, oh, it's this mutation, you need this kind of treatment. So we're hoping that IBD being a complex disease, by looking at it from the microbial angle, will be broken up to subset of disease. So we'll say, oh, you've got IBD that is driven by bacteria X and Y, yeah. we'll give you a combination of cocktail X and Y. Okay, makes sense. Because I guess, I mean, underlying of that, it's a, a huge science challenge. Microbiome is not well defined. Bacterial population, we don't know right. everything about it. And then on the other side, phage cocktails, we don't know everything about it. So, yeah. So that's the best way you found to, to like right. fight something this that, Something that we have the time to think about, we can sequence. Yeah. So I would say there's a lot of uncertainty, but we actually feel that the modality is very potent, at least for what we see. Stuff is extremely potent in, in, mouse, in mouse models. Yeah. Um, and again, if it's chronic disease, we have time, right? We can, we can be picky. We don't have to um, go for every patient. We can screen patients, decide whether they only have a specific strain that we think is driving disease, and sort of test it first there. If it works there, we could expand a bit the, the population. Okay. So time is the best. Okay. I had a question on how you stratify, the, stratify your, your patient population, which you just, you just answered. Um, I guess one, one question is more on the, so on the clinical side. I've seen in your, uh, on your on your website the your lead product is in or lead candidate is in IBD, and you are starting clinical relevant. Can you can you expand on the clinical yeah. side? So the clinical study in IBD would actually start next year. Um, that's the lead. I think it's very strategic. It it garners a lot of interest. Uh, we have uh, Johnson Johnson Takeda is also strategic investors in the company, which is great, and it's is helping us think about the study. Um, and that's, there's going to be a lot of work. Manufacturing of biologics is always complicated. A lot of the manufacturers don't know how to do phage. There's questions about delivery. So we feel confident now with, with the data that we have in terms of efficacy, but now we need to sort of make sure we know which patient to select. So we're actually actively now working with collaborators in Israel, Europe, and the US to actually gain more samples to understand how we stratify the patient, figure out formulation and then do the clinical study so a lot of work okay <laughs> good, good luck with that uh, <laughs> <I need it. laughs> and um, and so IBD is your, your major like lead but I saw you have also a lot of other indications right. so who are they and, and why did you pick up so many indications right so I think um, in the microbiome there's a lot of risk and you don't know what's going to be the right uh, indication that, that um, impacting a single microbe or a group of microbes will have dramatic effect. I think that's where you see most microbiome players are very diversified, right? They all have a pipeline of IBD, uh, some of them have C. diff, a lot of them looking into liver disease because of the correlation, translocation of bacteria from the gut to the liver. Uh, so we, I completely subscribe to that opinion. We need to be diversified just in terms of the risk of, of the pipeline. And that's why IBD, we're very excited. That's program number one. We think we have another potential target in IBD that's another up-and-coming target. Part of the Rondinex acquisition, the small company we bought, we got a target in liver disease, so that's there as well. And we also have interesting angles in target identification, and that's what we're looking at in immune oncology, because we think because of the computational pipeline that we've acquired and also licensed from the Weizmann Institute, we're looking at, at the problem of bacteria that are being affected by checkpoint inhibitors and affecting back the host in a different angle yeah. that might lead to new insights. Okay, that makes sense. And I guess similar other microbiome companies are also exploring yeah, immuno oncology. It's 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 yeah, right. <laughs> it's coming. But to stay on on IBD, it seems it's it's obvious like the number one indication for microbiome companies. Um, and obviously, right now you don't have any treatment or real treatment for IBD on the market. Don't you fear that some other microbiome companies will arrive first on the market, and maybe take the position? Like, how do you compete with right. them? So, so we're not aware of anyone who's uh, going with phage in IBD, and we do have a proprietary target that is protected from the technology from Kenya Honda. So I think we feel pretty comfortable. I do think that the future, to your point, will be you add some bacteria which are anti-inflammatory. Uh, I think the Vedanta program is very exciting. Also comes from the same uh, inventor in Japan, Kenya Honda. Yeah. So I think it's very cool. 
But the future is a combination, right? You add bacteria, you want to take out some bacteria. And I think our niche uh, is to take out bacteria. So that, that I think pretty comfortable. It means probably again that IBD, some of the patients would get one treatment, some others would get other treatments, and some the rest might get a combination of treatment. So, you know, I think there's room for everyone, for now at least. That's good. T talking about removing bacteria, um, a company in Paris, Illigo, is, is having a similar approach, also using not living phages, but you know, phages on the microbiome. You have a common investor, Seventure. So how do you differentiate or interact with them? Like, yeah. So I think they're doing great stuff. Um, uh, their, their angle on synthetic biology is very interesting. In our position, um, we're actually not engineering the phage to an extent of delivering like a CRISPR payload. Yeah. Uh, our position is we want to use the phage for what they're supposed to do, which is kill bacteria and, and use a phage cocktail to do that. Uh, and I think that's a differentiation. For us, the effort is more where we started the conversation finding the targets and then using a cocktail and we If we can, we'll use a natural occurring cocktail. If we can't, then we'll use synthetic biology tools. But again, I, th I think our modification are, are not as, um, not, not comparable to Eligo because we're taking different approaches. We still want to let phage do what they do naturally, which is amplify and, and kill bacteria. Okay, that's great. Um, so now move a bit to the, to the financial side. So New Waste, really a big round. I think it's probably the biggest Series A in, in Israel last year, if I'm correct. Arbimed, massive investor, Seventure, biggest investor in, in microbiome. Um, how come you raised that much right. in the Series excellent A? Excellent question. <laughs> it's an excellent question and, and definitely not a simple feat for an Israeli company. So although I think now there have been, there's been another $20 million round. There's a company, US Israel based, uh, that raised north of that. Yeah. So first, I think the landscape in Israel is a bit changing where yeah. the investors are more active and you get to see these larger rounds. Um, so that's one thing that changed. And to where you started, I, I think a lot of the round was driven by the excitement around the IBD target, right? Because phage has been around, but a unique target that is associated with IBD, that has shown causality in mouse models that looks more prevalent in patients than healthy people that we got our hands on early on and found phage quickly, that was unique. That got everyone excited. And, and a lot of help, just I would comment, The company was incubated part of the FutureX incubator, yeah. which is an Orbimed, Takeda, and J&J &J incubator. So that kind of gave us the you know, first initial steps. Once we had an interesting target, we found Phage. It could sort of take off. I, my question was on, on who was most interested, Takeda, J&J, &J, in the pharma or the, or the VCs like oh, Orbimed? Who was pulling in so more? It's both. It's both. both, it's both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now another question on that is, If, if you can attract like Orbimed or Seventure, why, why would you take so early a strategic investors? Is it not a risk like in the next three to yeah. five years? I, I think my, my thinking is that these strategic investors do not sort of hinder the deal capability of the company. Uh, I think we're learning a lot with them. We're working with the companies um, and they're really two of the leaders in the field of microbiome. So I don't view that they don't have any special rights. Everyone's been playing nice, uh, so I, I think it's been very beneficial. Okay. That's great. So yeah, great. So uh, in summary, but yeah, exploring the phages, a lot of potential, but a lot of unknown, very, lot of unknown on IBD and a lot of unknown on microbiome, but you, you have the cash to go through it. Maybe let's, let's take a step back and a bit more perspective on the, on the microbiome field. Like, what's your feeling? What have you seen in the, in the past five years? Like, yeah. So, so I think we went through a phase of a lot of excitement driven by the C. diff and Ceres, and then the clinical study by, Ferris, by Ceres failed. Yeah. So it sort of cooled off the field a bit, and then left more of the specialists in the field. So I think if two, three years ago, well, maybe two years ago, everyone wanted to do microbiome, I think now people are a little bit more cautious. Um, some people think it's good. I, I think you know having more investors' interests is always better. Um, so it's changed a bit. I, still think there's a lot of excitement. It's driven also by new fields of research, like the, the connection between microbiome and immune oncology, really hot, really new. Uh, the gut brain axis, very interesting. So it's picking up, it's spreading. Um, and I think there's still a lot of activity, uh, but we still don't know a lot of things, right? And a lot of the data, the public databases that we're all trying to base our findings are still not deep enough in terms of sequencing. 
So I think we still need a few more years for the field to kind of be very solid. Yeah. And, and that goes back to, I think, why the microbiome companies are very spread out, right? Like very diversified programs, because we don't know where we'll kind of find oil initially. Yeah, where's the gold? Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> and what, okay, and the follow-up question. The prices of oil, I guess gold is the better metaphor. What, what could be the, the oil, and do you, do you really believe like microbiome could be cause of Alzheimer's, oncology, like cancer, diabetes? Do you really think microbiome is that, is that impactful? Or so so I, I, think, I think it is impactful, but the lens you've got to look at it is whether in a clinical study that can't last more than two years, right? Whether you'll have an effect. So the question is, if somebody harbors a specific bacteria for 40 years that is causing some sort of low-grade inflammation, is causing aggregation pathology in, in their brain, whether if we remove the bacteria in, in a clinical study that lasts a year or two, will we have an effect? And I think that's a challenge. So I think we need to look at indications where one can see an effect within a given reasonable time frame. And that's, that's, right, it's the interplay of, of the biology and the causality, but also practicality. Can we see something yeah. in that? And I guess it's a similar challenge to anti-aging therapies or food, exactly. where it takes ages and you have exactly. a lot of causality. Okay, exactly. that's great. Um, great. Thanks, Jonathan, for your, for your time. Uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day.